Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In previous videos, we talked about endospores and we talked about the difference between exotoxin and endotoxin. Today, let's focus on anthrax as a disease. If you want to watch Bacillus anthracis, the bacteria, refer to the previous video. And look at this widened mediastinum here. Watch these videos in order. Oh, by the way, why do we call it anthrax? Because anthrax literally means coal because of the black escar, which is seen in cases of cutaneous anthrax. Anthrax spores could be used in nefarious acts. Anthrax spores were found in the mail before. If you inhale these spores, you get a different type of anthrax called inhalation anthrax, not to be confused with the cutaneous anthrax. So we have three types of anthrax, cutaneous anthrax, inhalation anthrax, and gastrointestinal anthrax. Speaking of anthrax, it's caused by Bacillus anthracis, which is a non-motile aerobic spore-forming gram-positive rod. Anthrax can make spores, and these spores can remain dormant for decades, if not centuries. The spore protects the Bacillus anthracis bacteria from the unfavorable environmental conditions. We talked about spores in previous videos. Please pause and review. Again, it's a gram-positive rod that is spore-forming, non-motile. And for the gazillionth time, please do not confuse anthrax with anthracosis. Between the intracellular and the extracellular fluid, who is more acidic? The answer is the intracellular because metabolism, which secretes acids, happens inside the cell. The virulent factors of bacillus anthracis are the toxins, which we talked about in previous videos, and the capsule. So we have three factors, protective antigen, edema factor, and lethal factor. Protective antigen plus edema factor will make edema toxin. Protective antigen plus lethal factor will make lethal toxin. So you have three factors, but two toxins. Do not confuse edema factor with elongation factor, both of which are abbreviated EF, as in F me. So edema factor plus protective antigen equals edema toxin. Protective antigen plus lethal factor equals lethal toxin. And we talked about the mnemonic for bacillus anthracis. We have three routes of infection, inoculation, ingestion, or inhalation. And we have three forms of anthrax. We have cutaneous anthrax caused by inoculation. We have gastrointestinal anthrax caused by ingestion. And we have inhalation anthrax caused by, guess what, inhalation. Remember the exotoxin? Yeah, A, B. What's that? Two different subunits. Subunit A, which is active, and subunit B, which binds binds your cell receptor and facilitates the entry of subunit A to your own cell. Can we apply the same concept for anthrax? Yes, indeed. What's the A subunit? The A subunit is the edema factor and the lethal factor. What is the B subunit? The protective antigen. That's why I call it the middleman. It's the wingman. It helps elongation factor and lethal factor enter into the cell. Three routes of infection, three forms of the disease. Anthrax is mainly a zoonosis. What does that mean? A disease that mainly infects animals. And then animals can infect humans. What kind of animals? Cows, goats, such as medicosis, because I'm the goat, and sheep. So exposure to the animals or animal products can lead to anthrax, especially wool. That's why we have wool sorters disease, which is nothing but the inhalation anthrax. Hey, Medicosis, out of the three forms of anthrax, which one is more common? Hands down, the most common is cutaneous anthrax. 95% of anthrax cases are cutaneous anthrax. About 5% inhalation, less than 1% gastrointestinal. Lucky for us, because the mortality rate of gastrointestinal anthrax can approach 100%. So we'll talk about cutaneous anthrax, then inhalation anthrax, then gastrointestinal anthrax. Cutaneous anthrax, 95% of cases. Route of entry, inoculation, incubation period about six days. Signs and symptoms, we start with a papule, which is an elevated lesion, elevated off the surface of your skin, then fill it with fluid. Now it's called a vesicle. Flatten it, it becomes an ulcer. Not just flatten it, an ulcer is removal of the epithelium and its basement membrane. When both are gone, it's called an ulcer. When only the epithelium is gone, it's called 
an erosion. So an ulcer is deeper than an erosion, something that your woke professor will never tell you. The ulcer is surrounded by erythema and edema, redness and swelling. Because remember, acute inflammation, what are the cardinal signs? Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Eventually, painless necrotic scar. That's why we call it anthrax, because it looks like a coal. It can heal with granulation tissue, leaving a hyperpigmented skin, plus or minus healing by fibrosis known as scar tissue. Can I get lymphadenopathy with cutaneous anthrax? Yes, usually a local lymph node or regional lymph node, but most of the time it's not generalized lymphadenopathy. Can you give me at least three causes of generalized lymphadenopathy? Let me know the answer in the comment section. How can I diagnose cutaneous anthrax? Where should I take the sample from? From the skin, of course. You can swab the fluid out of the vesicle or you can do a full thickness punch biopsy of the SCAR. Management, oral Cipro or oral Doxy. The lethality is less than 1% if you got treatment and about 20% without treatment. And if you think this is bad, wait until you see the next ones. Number two, inhalation anthrax, 5% of cases, route of entry, inhalation, incubation period about three days. But this pulmonary anthrax could be very prolonged. It could take two months. Why? Because the spores are hiding in your nose and they can remain as a spore, prolonging the incubation period or now we're getting sick they can go to the alveoli they will be engulfed by your alveolar macrophages send them to the mediastinal lymph nodes congratulations you have developed mediastinal lymphadenopathy which will widen the mediastinum if you do a chest x-ray and it can also lead to hemorrhagic mediastinitis Ew, that's why the mortality rate is high. Inhalation anthrax has two phases. First, prodromal phase, followed by fulminant phase. Prodromal phase lasts between one and six days, after which you can get into the fulminant phase. Prodromal phase is non-specific. We have fever, muscle aches, or myalgia, non-productive cough. Very non-specific. Influenza can do this. Fulminant phase, however, is fulminant, severe. Do you remember fulminant hepatitis? Same concept. Severe pulmonary anthrax. You have fever, massive edema, hashtag edema factor, hashtag edema toxin. Mediastinal lymphadenopathy, hemorrhagic mediastinitis, hypoxia, bacteremia, sepsis, septic shock, sometimes even meningitis. Yes, indeed, anthrax can lead to meningitis. Where should I take the sample from? Well, since the spore could be hiding in your nose, take it from the nasal passages. Or, since we can have pleural effusion, you need pleural fluid analysis. If you have sepsis, bacteremia, septic shock, etc., blood culture, if meningitis occurred, CSF analysis by lumbar puncture. Management. If we have pleural effusion, we need chest tube thoracostomy or thoracentesis. Since anthrax secretes a toxin, we need an antitoxin. And if you remember my video where we compared between exotoxin and endotoxin, only exotoxin have antitoxins against them. Oh, now it makes sense that anthrax is exotoxin. Yes, indeed. What antibiotics should I use? If there is no meningitis, Cipro and linezolid. If there is meningitis, Cipro and linezolid. And for the meningitis, you add meropenem. And if you thought that inhalation anthrax was bad, wait until you see the very rare but very severe gastrointestinal anthrax. Represents less than 1% of cases, route of entry, ingestion, incubation period about 3 days. Signs and symptoms, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. The vomiting is bloody, hashtag hematemesis. The diarrhea is bloody, hashtag hematochesia. I can have ascites, hemorrhagic lymph adenitis. Which lymph nodes are inflamed? Your mesenteric lymph nodes. Where should I take my sample from? Swab it. Well, it's gastrointestinal, so it's either oral or rectal. So you swab both. If there is ascites, you need to tap this fluid, paracentesis, and then you biopsy the lymph nodes of the mesentery, and you biopsy the spleen because the spleen is a lymph organ. It's a secondary lymphatic organ, if you have watched my hematology oncology playlist. Management, if there is ascites, tap it, because this tap, paracentesis, is both diagnostic and therapeutic. 
that does not mean that it's gonna succeed, but we hope for the best. Antitoxin against the toxin and give antibiotics. Cipro plus linezolid. Some pros for the pros. The only bacterium that has a polypeptide capsule rather than the regular polysaccharide capsule is bacillus anthracis very high yield when you go to the lab and see bacillus anthracis on blood agar they can appear as comma shaped organisms we call them the medusa head let's review the characteristics of bacillus anthracis from picmonic anthrax Amtrak train. Gram positive, here's the angel. Spore forming, here's the spore. The capsule is polypeptide. Deglutamate, here's the D with glue. And mate is the tomato. Don't forget my protective antigen, my edema edemami factor, and my lethal toxin. Oh, by the way, how does the edema factor work? By raising cyclic AMP. Now let's talk about the disease itself anthrax as a disease we have three types cutaneous pulmonary and gastrointestinal cutaneous has the painless black scar that's why we call it anthrax pulmonary anthrax there is widened mediastinum and it's known as wool sorter's disease rapidly fatal and if you ingest anthrax infected meat you can get that deadly gastrointestinal anthrax did you like this video you will adore my antibiotics course which will teach you about antibiotics example ciprofloxacin linezolid emipenem miropenem ertapenem all of them are discussed here go to medicosisperfectsnetis.com to download it today I also have a surgery high yields course and an emergency medicine high yields course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.